Good morning and welcome to our online service here at St Mark's Church. I'm Anthea Carmichael, I'm the curate here at St Mark's and I'd like to welcome you all to our service. It's the fourth Sunday of Advent where we honour Mary at this point. So I'm going to light our fourth candle and say a prayer. God our Father, the angel Gabriel told the Virgin Mary that she was to be the mother of your son. Though Mary was afraid, she responded to your call with joy. Help us, whom you call to serve you, to share like her in your great work of bringing to our world your love and healing. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. I'm going to open us up in prayer as we, just before we begin to lead in worship. Now is the time to wake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Please join as we worship. Christ by highest heaven adored, 
Christ the everlasting Lord Late in time behold him come Offspring of the virgin's womb Veiled in flesh the Godhead see Hail the incarnate deity Pleased as man with man to dwell Jesus our Emmanuel Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace Hail the Son of Righteousness Light and life to all he brings Risen with healing in his wings Mild he lays his glory by Born that man no more may die Born to raise the sons of earth Born to give them second birth Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King We have now come to a time in the service where we Say sorry to God for the things we may have said or done that has been displeasing to him. A voice cries out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. So let us listen and turn to the Lord in penitence and faith. And we'll say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Just a few family news to share with you all this morning. Today is the last day for you to drop off your collections for the Chris Dingle collection that we donate to the Children's Society. The Christmas services this year will all be streamed online and you have to also book online. Now, a majority of them are at capacity, but please do go online to see if you could book to come or you could go online to join in the services as they all will be streamed. That's www.stmkr.org. We have our carol services today at 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. We have our crib service on Christmas Eve at 4 p.m. We have our midnight communion service at 11.30 p.m. and our Christmas Day service at 10.30 a.m. Following week, on the 27th, we will only be having our 9 a.m. communion service. Again, you could book online or join us online as that service will be streamed. There will be coffee and prayer ministry as usual at, after the service on Zoom and those details will be put up at the end of the service. We're now going to share a sign of God's peace. May the God of peace make you completely holy, ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with me. Please share with one another a sign of God's peace. I'll place a comment in the comment section.
Simon will now lead us in prayer and Neil will then share the scripture reading from Luke chapter 1, followed by the talk from Caroline. Good morning. Uh, during our time of prayer today, uh, there'll be a response at the end of each section, which I will invite you to participate in. I will say the words, Jesus, you are the light of the world, and I'd ask you to respond, help us shine your light this Christmas. Today our Advent theme is joy. Let us pray together as God's family as we seek to reflect his joy this season. Through the life of Mary, the mother of Jesus, we read of this radiant joy that she had. It was beautifully expressed as she took in the miraculous news of the child that she would bear, the one who would be called Jesus, the Son of God. Mary exclaimed in Luke, My soul glorifies the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. Let us pray. Father, teach us to worship in spirit and truth, that we may grow in intimacy with you as Mary did. In this season, we rejoice in you as God our Saviour. Renew in us this first love. Jesus, you are the light of the world. Help us to shine your light this Christmas. For all of us, this Christmas will probably be like no other. For those of us who can't be with family and friends this season, help us to look to you for your grace, strength and comfort. Help us to look outwards and to be a blessing to others through our prayers, phone calls, Zoom calls, texts. For Jesus, you are the light of the world. Help us to shine your light this Christmas. Today we thank you for Will and Anthea, for Jenny and Kelly and for all those that serve in the life of the church. Thank you, Father, for all the ways that St. Mark's is seeking to be a light in the community this Christmas. We pray for the forthcoming Cribs service on Christmas Eve and for all those who have been invited. We thank you for the team who are putting together the programme. God, may you bless this ministry of reaching out to many families. Father, we pray for the Christmas carol services and the Christmas day service. We thank you for the choir, the musicians, and we pray for their final rehearsals. We pray too for those who are leading, for those speaking, and we pray for all those who will attend, whether in person or online. Lord, may you be glorified. Jesus, you are the light of the world. Help us to shine your light this Christmas. Father, we pray for those in our community or those that we may know who are facing particularly difficult times this Christmas. We think of those who have lost loved ones in recent months, that you may be their comfort and strength in their loss and mourning. We think of those who have lost work or that their work is looking more and more precarious. Give them hope and grace. May you bring others to support, encourage, and to give wise counsel. We pray for the children and students in our church and local community that have had such an unsettled term with many disruptions. Help them and their parents through this unusual time with all the stresses that it has brought. Jesus, you are the light of the world. Help us to shine your light this Christmas. Father, as we pray for our nation, we also pray for the nations of the world. As negotiations continue with Brexit, at least at this time of this recording, we pray for a way through this. We pray that you would help each side to have wisdom and discretion and that solutions can be found. Father, we remember the nations that face war, civil unrest, terrorism. Particularly, we pray for the many families in Nigeria whose high school, high school 
school-aged children were recently kidnapped. In the midst of their anguish, bring comfort. We pray for the Nigerian government and security forces to bring this crisis to an end and that a, as peaceful a way possible can be found. Thank you, Father, that you are sovereign over the nations. Watch over your people, your church, your bride. Jesus, you are light, the light of the world. Help us to shine your light this Christmas. And now we close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The reading is taken from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 33 and verses 38 to 56. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favoured? that the mother of my Lord should come to me. As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. As we've heard already this morning, today is the fourth Sunday in Advent. And this morning we're looking at how we can know God's gift of joy in our lives. So as we start, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for our time this morning. Thank you for the gift of joy that you give to us. And we pray that you will come and speak to us now by your Holy Spirit. And we pray that as we um, go from this service, that we will know your peace and joy in our lives. Amen. If I were to ask you what three things brought you joy, what would you answer? 
Here are four people from our congregation who are going to tell us now what, what three things bring them joy. The three things that I have enjoyed doing during the past few months are making full use of our greenhouse during spring and summer, going on socially distanced holidays with our three grandsons, and also going on walks around London with Thelma and sometimes the rest of the family. Family, grandchildren and great friends. Um, three things that bring me joy. Um, my family, a nice long walk in good weather, and traveling to a new country I've never been before. Hi St Mark's, I'm Celia. And um, three things that have given me and my family great joy this year have been spending time together, getting to know each other really well, nature, beautiful nature. We haven't gone away anywhere to see it, but just seeing the changes in the trees, the changes in the season, the different kind of flowers in the gardens of our neighbours has been a joy. And the other thing has been getting to realise what really matters in life, what is important. Now maybe share with members in your household what you would say to that question. What three things bring you joy? And if you'd like to, you could maybe write them in the comments box as well and share it with the rest of us. You've got a few moments to do that, so off you go. It's great to see some of those comments coming in. Quite a few saying time with family and a variety of other things too. Thank you. When we speak of the word joy, it can raise a variety of emotions. For some people, they will think what brings them happiness and all the good things that are going on in their lives right now. And that's good. And that's like we heard from John and Tom and Celia and Maria. For others who are facing hardship and challenges, who may be ill or in pain and are being told to cheer up and choose joy, to them, the word feels hollow and insincere. The biblical teaching of joy starts right at the beginning of the Bible. The people living in Bible times lived very harsh and difficult lives, and God's chosen people, the Israelites, were a persecuted minority. You'll remember that Moses was used by God to rescue the Israelites from slavery out of Egypt and to help them flee from the oppressive Pharaoh. Every year at the Passover, the Israelites would retell the story of how God had rescued them. They were cultivating a memory of God's faithfulness and goodness to them and passing it on throughout the generations. It was a great cause for celebration and joy. But their joy was not determined by the present and what was going on in their lives there and then, but it was rooted in the memory of God's act of deliverance in the past. Because God had delivered them in the past, it gave them hope for the future. And both are connected by God's faithful character and goodness, and therefore they choose faith and hope in God in the present. In other words, they are able to choose joy because they know of God's deliverance and faithfulness, and that won't change. So that gives them hope for the future. One of the biggest misconceptions when following Christ is that life becomes a whole lot easier when you become a Christian. But this is far from the truth. God never promises us a storm-free or trouble-free life. In fact, Jesus made it very clear in John chapter 16 and verse 33 that problems, difficulties and challenges will still come. In this world, you will have trouble, we read. But he also promises 
that he will be with us always till the close of the age. The world wants us to believe that our happiness is based in our circumstances. So when our circumstances change, our mood changes. But God wants to remind us to place our hope and joy not on circumstances that will always be variable, but to place our hope and joy in Jesus Christ. God brings us his joy and his peace. All we are called to do is to rely on him and not on anyone or anything else for our joy. God is the perfect and ultimate source of unlimited and unspeakable joy. In Galatians chapter 5, Paul tells us that joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. This means God is the one who produces joy in us as we grow to be more like Jesus. It's not self-generated. Since joy comes from the inside, we can be joyful in both good and hard situations. When we consider that Paul wrote his letter to the Philippian Christians while he was a prisoner in Rome, this helps us to see a real example of joy. While in prison, Paul would sing hymns of praise to God. And here he was in squalid conditions, having been beaten and was chained up. People began to hear about Paul and why he was in prison. The whole imperial guard knew that Paul was in prison because of his belief and because he followed Jesus. Despite what seemed to be a series of setbacks, the suffering Paul faced actually helped to spread the good news of Jesus. And for this reason, Paul was joyful. In our reading this morning that Neil read for us, we heard about the time when the angel Gabriel came to Mary and told her that she was to have a baby and that baby would be God's son. Imagine, he was Mary, probably a girl of about 14 years old. She's engaged to be married to Joseph and waiting for her wedding, a really exciting time. And in those days, getting engaged was a complete commitment to marriage. It was a big thing. And here was Gabriel telling Mary that she was going to have a baby. Out of marriage, not with Joseph, but with God's son. We read in verse 29 that Mary was greatly troubled. Well, I think that must be the biggest understatement in the entire Bible. Greatly troubled, I'm sure she was. But in verse 30, the angel Gabriel tells Mary to not be afraid, but that she has found favor with God. Gabriel tells Mary that her cousin Elizabeth, who hasn't been able to have children, is now six months pregnant. So Mary goes off to see her. In verse 45, we read that Elizabeth says, Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. At this, Mary sings this most amazing song of praise to God. My soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. As Mary sings, she recounts the goodness of God in the past. In verse 52, she sings, he has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted the humble. In verse 53, he has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. And in verse 54, he has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever. Mary had been put in a really difficult situation where she ran the risk of losing Joseph, being shunned and disowned by her family, her reputation being in tatters and losing everything. Yet she chose to trust 
even though she didn't understand. And in verse 38, Mary says to Gabriel, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. Mary's joy came from within. It was rooted in a living relationship with God and in the memories of God's faithfulness in the past as demonstrated in her worship. That gave her hope for the future and she therefore chose to place her hope and her faith and her trust in God and to know his joy in her present circumstances. I don't know about you, but I found this last week really quite difficult. Being put into tier three with its added restrictions just feels so hard. There are some of us who haven't seen our family or good friends for many months. There are those who are living alone and isolation just feels even harder when it's cold and dark outside. For the children and young people, there are no more play dates, there are no more youth face-to-face -face meetings. Everything just feels such a challenge and there's a limit to how much you want to do on Zoom. With vaccines starting to be given, there is a glimmer of hope in the new year, but it's still gonna be several months before we reach any semblance of normality. And we're just tired and weary of it all, aren't we? But the question is, how will we respond to it all? When we're tired, weary, frustrated, and possibly feeling quite low, it's so easy to wonder, where is God in all of this? And to complain and to be angry. We all feel like that at times. But how we respond when we're faced with tough times, suffering or hardship, can reveal what we really believe about God and how much we really trust him. Sometimes it's about saying to God, I choose to praise you and to be joyful, even though I don't feel like it. But what's also really important to say is that joy in suffering does not deny, discredit, or devalue grief and pain. But it gives us hope in these difficult times. This joy is rooted in the faithfulness of God, who ultimately does everything for his glory and for our good. God used Mary's faith and willingness to bring his son into the world. God used Paul's difficult circumstances to spread the good news of Jesus and to build the church. God uses these difficult times that we're facing to teach us important things. I don't know about you, but I've certainly learned some really profound lessons over these last few months. Paul's confidence in his identity in Christ, his calling and his mission was essential to the peace and joy he experienced in Jesus. This is the same for us too. If we have our faith firmly rooted deeply in Christ and know that we belong to him, then we too will know his peace and his joy. In my own life, the most difficult time for me was when my husband Malcolm died. I really struggled as I couldn't understand why God hadn't healed him. And this may be how some of you are feeling today having lost those that you love over these last few months and are missing them dreadfully. But I was faced with a decision. I either had to turn my back on God and walk away, or I had to hold on to him, to trust him, and to choose to allow him to fill me with joy. As I look back over my life, I remembered all the amazing things that God had done in my life, the miracles I'd seen him do. And I knew that the faithfulness of God that I had seen and experienced in the past 
would never change. And that gave me a hope for the future, which meant that I could choose hope, peace and joy in the present, even though it was a really dark and difficult time. My joy was not pretend. It was not conjured up by the strength of willpower. It was God's Holy Spirit stirring in me that despite my pain and my circumstances, I could choose to be joyful. So on the days when it all feels too much and we feel overwhelmed and down, I'd like to encourage you to take some time to look back and to remember all that God has done in your life in the past and to give him thanks. It's as we do that that we can have the confidence to choose not to let our situation overwhelm us and to choose joy even in the midst of the difficulties. If you haven't yet started that relationship with Jesus, then I'd encourage you to read through the Christmas story and see just how much God loves you, that he sent Jesus so you could have a relationship with him. It's as we ask the Holy Spirit to come into our lives, he gives us the gift of peace and joy. If you'd like to do that this morning, then please do go to the Zoom for the prayer ministry after this service because there are people there who would love to talk to you and to pray with you. So as we walk these uncertain times over these next few weeks, and as we head towards Christmas, whatever that might look like for you, let's dig deep into our relationship with Jesus, making sure that we are rooted in him. As we sing and as we listen to the carols, let's remember God's enormous love for us in sending Jesus, his son, to be born that first Christmas, that he might grow up to know and understand all that we go through and ultimately to die on the cross to set us free. God still has that same love for each and every one of us. And so as we keep our eyes on Jesus and love him with all that we are, the Holy Spirit will work in us to produce true joy. May you know the wonderful peace and joy that Jesus brings this Christmas time. Amen. Our final song this morning is the carol, Joy to the World, the Lord has come. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart be there in room, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reign. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy Repeat, repeat the sounding joy No more let sins and sorrows grow Nor thorns infest the ground comes to make his blessings flow far as the curse is found far as the curse is found far as far as the curse is found he rules the world with 
truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders and wonders of his love joy to the world the lord is come let earth receive her king let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing and heaven and nature sing and heaven and heaven nature sing thank you caroline just as mary may we receive that good news and message from god with comfort and joy within our hearts in a moment, I'll share a blessing, but just to remind you, you can join us on Zoom for coffee or for prayer ministry, and the details will follow on the screen. May God himself, the God of peace, make you perfect and holy, and keep you safe and blameless in spirit, soul, and body for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. Please do have a great week. Please remain safe. Keep praying and enjoy however it is that you're spending Christmas this year. And know that God is with us and that his Son, Jesus Christ, will come again. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ.